Hello, I'm Bruce Lorenz, and this show is called Bruce on the Loose. And I'm here uh, today and subsequently before and hopefully doing shows after for some of the younger readers in Wadsworth and beyond. And today we're going to go ahead and read about Clifford, the small red puppy. And I'm going to go ahead and take my mask off now so you can hear me just a little bit better. And this was a this was a dog paw mask, and I think it's appropriate. We had that on today with uh, Clifford being our first uh, of two books. Hi, I'm Emily Elizabeth, and this is Clifford, my big red dog. Yesterday, my friend Martha said, I got my dog from a fancy pet store. Where did you get yours? So I told her, how I got Clifford. When I was little, I lived in the city. I didn't have a dog. One day, the man down the hall called us. His dog had puppies. He wanted to give me one. One puppy was smaller than the rest. The man said, don't take him. He is the runt. He will always be small and sick. But I love that little puppy. He needed me. I named my puppy Clifford. He was so tiny that I had to feed him with the doll's baby bottle. We got the smallest collar we could find for Clifford. It was too big. When he began to eat dog food, we had to watch him all the time. Looks like he fell in the dog dish. I can't believe it. He was so little that he was always getting lost, even in our small apartment. Maybe he got in her dad's boot, it looks like. Da Daddy said Clifford was just too small. He didn't think he would live through the winter. I was very sad. That night, I told Clifford I wished he would grow to be a big, healthy dog. I told him I loved him. Next morning, he looked bigger to me. He seemed to have an easier time eating his dog food and his collar wasn't so loose. In fact, by the time Daddy got home, his collar was too small. By bedtime, Clifford's tiny basket seemed a little too small for him, so I let him sleep on my pillow again. That was a mistake. Next morning, Mommy thought Clifford looked different. Daddy said, I think he's growing. I decided to take Clifford for a walk. At the corner, I saw a big dog coming. I knew I should pick Clifford up so the big dog couldn't hurt him. I shouldn't have worried. Clifford really was growing. He ran home, we ran home to show Mommy how big he was. Had our port apartment door grown smaller? Dad couldn't believe it. We put Clifford in the garden to sleep that night. In the morning, the lady upstairs called us. It was about Clifford. I think she was scared of Clifford looking through the window. In fact, all the neighbors were starting to notice him. The landlord called the police. They came to see Clifford. They said Clifford would have to go. But how? He couldn't go through the door. There was just one way to get him out of our garden. Looks like a big steamship got him and got him uh, in the moving van. 
we sent him to live with my uncle who lived in the country. I was sad. I missed my little puppy. And he missed me. One day, we got a surprise. My uncle wanted Daddy to come work with him in the country. We moved right away. Clifford was waiting for me. I said, Clifford, stop growing. You are just right. So I said to Martha, that's how I got my dog. Tell me again how you got your dog. Martha said, forget it. Well, I hope you really enjoyed Clifford, uh, the small red puppy. And it kind of reminded me of a story we did uh, earlier uh, this summer. And it, it, that book was entitled Granite. And it, I don't know if you remember that or could look back on our shows. And it was a dog that was really the runt and the smallest one. The other dogs kind of picked on it and bullied it, but it then uh, w went ahead and got care from uh, the owner, and she really took uh, excellent care, just like Emil Emily Elizabeth did with Clifford, and Granite grew and grew stronger, and, and the owner knew it was a very smart dog, and really the other dogs really followed Granite, and it became a champion on the Iditarod race, and uh, uh, Libby Riddles won several uh, Iditarod races with uh, Granite being the lead dog and never would go ahead and get lost along the very long route from Anchorage to Nome, Alaska. We forgot to mention the, who the author and the illustrator, Norman Bridwell, and he did both. He did both the writing and the illustrations of the Clifford book. And I think that was interesting because sometimes uh, people have the skills uh, to go ahead and do uh, both. Uh, Jane Ferguson, you remember, we did about the long-haired dachshunds, Izzy uh, and friends, and you know she did, did both too. She wrote and also was the illustrator. And I think you know sometimes uh, people get a late start. Uh, Clifford was a runt. But Aunt Emily Elizabeth took uh, him under her wing, fed him, wished that he would grow, and everyone was amazed how much uh, Clifford did grow. I went to the dog park the other day and, and Valley View Park off West Street, and there was a Great Dane there. And my dog Buddy is about 42 pounds, but this Great Dane looked about three or four times as big as Buddy, and uh, you know they got along quite well. And uh, it just goes to show that people come in and dogs come in different sizes and shapes and you never know sometimes how big you might get. And if you keep eating your vegetables and fruits and listening to your parents, I'm sure you're going to be really big as well. The next book we're going to do today is The Little Island. And that is uh, uh, Golden McDonald and Leland Wisgard were the author and the illustrator here. And this is a very interesting book that I think uh, you'll really enjoy. There was a little island in the ocean. Around it, the winds blew, and the birds flew, and the tides rose and fell on the shore. Clouds passed over it, Fish swam around it, and the fog came in from the sea and hid the little island in a soft, wet shadow. The morning was very quiet on the island, with only the spiders sailing their webs against a gentle wind. Boy, those look like really big spider webs to me. Small flowers, white and blue, and violets with golden eyes, and little waxy white-pink chuckleberry blossoms, and one tickly-smelling pear tree bl bloomed on the island, and that 
was the spring. Then one day, all the lobsters crawled in from the sea and hid under the rocks and ledges of the island to shed their shells and let their new ones grow hard and strong in hiding places in the dark. And the seals came barking down from the north to lie on the sunny rocks and raise their baby seals. And the kingfishers came from the south to build nests. Boy, they seem to have a long beak. And they're really interesting birds indeed. And the gulls laid their eggs on the rocky ledges. And wild strawberries turned red. Summer had come to the little island. Boats sailed to the little island from far away, and herring and mackerel leaped out of the water, all silver in the moonlight. The seaweed squeaked at low tide, and little green pea peas grew on the pear tree. A black crow flew over. And a little kitten came to the island with some people on a picnic. The kitten prowled around the island and saw that it was all surrounded by water. What a little, what a little land, said the kitten. This little island is as little as big is big. So you are, said the island. Maybe I am a little island too, said the kitten a little fur island in the air, and he left the ground and jumped in the air. That is just what you are, said the little island. But I am part of this big world, said the little kitten. My feet are on it. So am I, said the little island. No, you're not, said the kitten. Water is all around you and cuts you off from the land. Ask any fish, said the island. So the kitten caught a fish. Answer me this or I'll eat you up, said the kitten. How is an island a part of the land? Come with me, said the fish, down into the dark secret places of the sea and I will show you. I can't swim, said the cat. Show me another way or I'll eat you up. Then you must take it on faith. What I, I tell you, said the fish. What's that, said the cat? Faith. To believe what I, told, what I tell you about what you don't know, said the fish. And the fish told the kitten how all land is one land under the sea. The cat's eyes were shining with the secret of it. And because he loved secrets, he believed. And he let the fish go. And he got on his boat and sailed away into the setting sun. The little island had a little woods on it with seven big trees in it and 17 small bushes and one big rock. Birds came to the woods on the island and butterflies and moss flew over the ocean till they got there. Night came to the little island, dark and still, and seven little fireflies flashed in the darkness. A bat flew around and around the pear tree and woke up the owl. The wind whistled. Then came the storm. The wind blew from the southeast. Waves as big as glassy mountains came before it and lightning and thunder and always the howling, moaning, whistling wind. 
And then the storm passed and left the little island where it found it, in the summer sea. Autumn came, and the yellow pears dropped slowly to the ground. Winter came, and the snow fell softly, like a great quiet secret in the night, cold and still. Nights and days came and passed, and summer and winter, and the sun and the wind and the rain. And it was good to be a little island, a part of the world, and a world of its own, all surrounded by bright blue sea. Well, I sure hope uh, you enjoyed the little island, and it's true. It, it may appear that the little island was isolated, and it didn't have anything to do with uh, any, other, uh, any other individual or nature, uh, but in reality, uh, many people depended and many animals depended on the little island. The moths and butterflies, the kingfisher, the birds. Uh, certainly there was a wood, little woods there and the seals uh, came and the lobsters. So really a lot of people depended on the little island uh, to go ahead and go ahead and be part of their lives. And it is. We are all connected. The little island uh, underneath the sea is connected to land. And certainly it may have uh, happened from a glacier or a volcano uh, developed uh, and made the island to begin with. But it, we are all connected. And, and that kind of reminds me a little bit of my tie, how uh, connected everyone seems to be. And Mickey Mouse is one of my favorites, and maybe you've uh, read books about him or saw movies or cartoons. And he has uh, three very important friends on also my tie with Goofy and Pluto and Donald Duck. Sometimes he doesn't always uh, see eye to eye with Donald and some of his ideas, but uh, Donald is a good friend. And of course, uh, Minnie and the Daisy Duck as well are, are two additional friends that Mickey has. But they're all connected. What uh, Goofy does sometimes impacts on what Mickey does. And what Mickey does, uh, Donald wants to have input and find out what's going on. And Pluto as well, uh, who really does look out for Mickey. And they have a very, very fine relationship. So I hope you enjoyed the books today, Clifford, and also The Little Island. Next week, we'll be back with uh, some more books to help you uh, getting ready for school, or hopefully it's right around the corner. You can continue to watch Bruce on the Loose for other stories that we will provide for you. Thank you very much, and have a good day.